So my dad and I are here at a very, very beautiful place in Victoria called Point Nepean, which is very important in Australian and Victorian history. And we're at sort of one of the earliest colonial sites in Australia. And uh, it's a military fort and we're currently at the quarantine station, right? All right, let's go through. So it's a bit like the Ellis Island of quarantine. So people are sent here. Their luggage had come off the ships because they were assumed ships that came in, put up a yellow flag, we've got a disease on board, might be typhoid, everyone's going to offload here. If they don't have the yellow flag, they get, they get assessed, they get told to go back, you, know, you can go on to Melbourne. If they get assessed, then people come here and they put all their suitcases, all their belongings, go to a heating unit. So what did the heating unit do? Try to kill disease? It killed, it killed the bugs, right? So okay. The bugs were in there, that's what they thought. Okay, I see. And there was a, yeah, this is also heating in here. And then their luggage was stored, but they were then, they were found to as well, so. So their luggage would have come this side, they would have gone the other side. Um, and, you know, if there was stuff to find, that provide all the heating in there for the cleansing. Yeah, so this is one of the early, uh, early day immigration spots for, for Australians, uh, well it came, you know, people that came from overseas to immigrate to Australia sort of stopped here, like, like Dad said, sort of like Ellis Island. Um, very cool. Is this whole is this whole area the quarantine site? Yeah, or? so they would have come in through here, so people would have been assessed in there, and then okay. been been separated between those that have got typhoid and those that don't. Okay, I see. So just down this beach here, on December seventeenth, nineteen sixty seven, around the height of the Cold War, right before the height of the Vietnam War. Australia's Prime Minister at the time, Harold Holt, disappeared right here at Cheviot Beach. We went down uh, to hang out on the beach with a couple of his buddies on a day somewhat similar to today. And he went off swimming and disappeared. His body has never been found. Somewhere down here is where he was with his friends on that December day, never to be seen again. Yeah. It's a storm. stormy day. The scariest part is like even if it was just a drowning, which is the most likely thing, his body was never found. But I mean when you look out here, does it really surprise you? The thing that's very difficult with Australia and its beaches, especially for tourists, a lot of people come here um, and don't know how to swim or unaware of how strong the current can be in the water and how rough the waves are smashing onto rocks. So many people have lost their lives. It's the best trade, the roughest water in Australia. Tasmania, yeah. Australia. Well, we was just in Tasmania <laughs> a month ago, just down there. So, yeah, very, very rough waters indeed. All right, so we're walking into gun one of Fort Nepean's gun emplacements. And they were these tricky little hidden guns that would be stationed here rise up above the ground, fire, and then go back down again. And any ships off in the distance would be like, what the fuck? Where did that, where did that fire come from? All right, let's see. So when you stand on that little spot here, it apparently changes the, uh, the sound because you're right in the center. And I'm gonna, I don't know if you can already hear this, but I can hear it myself. Bow! Tantosh! Can you hear a difference? Step off. It's not as, definitely not as loud. Go back in again, and you can hear it. So I could imagine that when this gun fired, it would be incredibly, incredibly loud and could probably pop your eardrums. Shit. Oh my gosh! Look at this view, and it's so windy. 
You can see where they had the different gun emplacements. They had number six to the right, and then one through five on the other side. And of course they had most of them facing out side of the bay, because if any ships were to try and come in, they would need more reinforcements. And it's lucky they had that barrel number six on the side we're walking on now, because I believe that's the barrel that was used in both World War One and World War Two. I think, as it was facing inland. So, it's a little known fact, I'm going to try and find the exact spot where this gun is, but it is believed that the first Allied shot of both World War I and World War II was actually from the same gun with a different barrel fitted here in Point Nepean. Okay, so this is the spot where the first Allied shot of World War I and World War II was. Gun placement number six. Here we go, the rip at Fort Nepean. Strong currents, deep water, slippery rocks, sudden large waves, submerged rocks and unstable cliffs. Yeah, I'd say all of this fits into that category. As a young kid, or and teenager, this wall right here, We'd run up against the wall and see who could try and touch the top. It's a tough thing to do. <laughs> go, Dad. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm going to try and do it. Oh, no. Nah. Oh, that is high. No, no, no chance. You smash your face There's in the wall. no chance. Look at this little pole here. Yeah, yeah, the greasy bikes. So, what's closed? The boathouse? Quite a lot of oh, engine house, okay. We're going to see, you know, with a, you know, six million bucks to be spent by the state on heritage improvements here, the priorities of the two guns. Just look how wild it is, man. Absolutely wild. So in between that set of sand there and then that tiny little island, who knows how many unexploded mines are in there? We don't know. We've got no clue. And, as you'll see up here, I was only here about, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. And this was open, but the track is now closed because part of the ground has eroded away and it's just not, not a safe place to walk. So it's probably going to take them a number of months to fix that up. No, I'm all good. Alrighty, please watch your head. Let's go in here. Uh... Whoa! This is spooky. So shell, shell lifts, shells here. So normally the storage is lower, so if it exploded, it can be contained more. Yeah, so this is where I would have stored them, heavy doors, couple of blast doors. Put them up, and they take them out to the guns. Ah, okay. Lifted the shells up there to the guns. That makes sense. Yeah, just, here, so, yeah, just have them on the shelf. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's super cool down here as well. Really, really cool. I mean, like physically cold. Yeah, so they're cool, cool temperatures. This is what we were looking down at before. Climb underneath. Climb underneath here. Yeah. <sighs> Once. <laughs> Once upon a time where I am standing was filled with military artillery shells. Hardware. Yes, indeed. So if you pass through like this, a shell. This is the World War II cover on. So, 
this was pop up, you know, pop, pop up. You see this is the original. So we, remember we saw it at, um, at one of the forts. I showed you that emplacement on Cheviot Hill. Cheviot yeah. Fort. So that's what it would have had. But this is all exploded because they practice explosive demolishing, um, you know, so um, this is a train, this is an army base training, they're doing live rounds, and they thought they were old forts, so we're going to train people how to blow up um, gun emplacements. Right. Well, now we sit there and say, why'd they do that? You know, we're spending six million bucks to restore it. Mm. And then we've got the issue to decide, so that's a World War II roof, so they moved from that gun emplacement pop-up, they, they changed the tech, and that's a reinforced concrete roof. So when we replace, one will be a World War One type gun, this will be the World War Two with a reinforced roof concrete. Okay, cool. Two different designs. Oh, that's awesome. It was adapted from the World War One gun. So you can see the difference, what they were between yeah. the two World Wars. Right, World War One, World War Two, probably. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, 100%, you can see that difference. Yeah, and this is World War Two. yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Bits and pieces to make it put it all back together and then recast. So this um, was the, the World War missing. One mechanism. Yeah, yeah. Once they can move the gun around depending on which way they're wanting to fire on which side of the boat. Just look how many spider webs there are as well. Not to distract from our military history. <laughs> so many. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the disappearing gun. And here we pretty much are at the point. Port Phillip Heads. Queenscliff, Point Nepean. And uh, as Dad was just saying before, this is one of the roughest areas in Australia in terms of its waters, the whole of Bass Strait, and down that way near the Great Ocean Road is known as, was it Shipwreck Bay? Coast. Shipwreck Coast, not Bay, Shipwreck Bay. Uh, Shipwreck Coast, uh, because of just how dangerous it is. Alrighty, I'll leave it here for today's video at Point Nepean and the beautiful fort at Point Nepean. So please leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe for content in the future. Dad, would you like to say something? Pleasure to be with you and uh, be helping uh, Nathan guide around uh, Point of Pear National Park. It's a great time. Brilliant. And look at this wonderful view of Port Phillip Heads.